good afternoon, good morning, good evening, happy day. It's the Magic of Podcast. You can listen anytime, anywhere to our amazing stories of Leander ISD students because this is the Student Voice Podcast from the Leander ISD Podcast Network. We are a fast growth, high achieving school district in Central Texas, including the cities of Austin, Cedar Park, and Leander. Today, I have the privilege of bringing you a conversation from March 6th with Peyton Johnson, a fifth grade student at Grandview Hills Elementary School in Austin, Texas. We are going to talk about mindfulness. We are going to talk about reading, books, knowledge, research. We're going to talk about IB. Grandview Hills is an international baccalaureate PYP school. She's going to talk about what that means for the school, for the students, and what their learning looks like. To provide you all with some context, I did say March 6th is when this conversation happened. Today is April 6th, about one month later, and the world has changed in that one month. What was so satisfying for me was to be able to re-listen to Peyton's conversation and her insight about mindfulness, the study of emotional intelligence, of self-awareness, of emotional control. She's going to lead us through an exercise during the um, during the podcast, during the interview. So being able to, to re-listen and to take a moment to think about how awesome it is that our kids have opportunities like what they're providing at Grandview Hills Elementary School to be whole child in what they think about, what they provide, and to see how... A student can really gravitate and attach to that kind of learning. Excited to bring it to you here today. Enjoy the listen. Peyton. Yes. I'm Corey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How are you doing this Friday? I'm good. Today's been very calm. It's been calm. What has made it a calm day for you? Well, I finished all my work on Thursday, so I got to read a book all day. So, we're here at Grandview Hills Elementary School. You're in fifth grade. What do you, what's your story? What, what has gotten you to, to fifth grade? And then, let's talk about just what's gotten you to this point. Um, usually, staying on task in class really helps because you get to know that the teachers will be there for you and they'll always pay attention to what you have to say even if you're not paying attention to class. They just want you to do better and I like Grammy Hills because it's like a global thinking area. So I don't really have to think about just what's happening in Austin. I think about what's happening like worldwide. Um, I was in Quest, am in Quest, and I just really like to do So you've been in Grandview Hills for how long? Almost four years. Okay, so you came here like in first grade? Second. Second grade. Mm-hmm. So where were you before Grandview Hills? I lived in Lockhart, Texas, okay. which is a small town. And it's not the same because out here it's just um, updated. Mm-hmm. So we get more opportunities than what I used to have. So you're in Lockhart, and that's where you were for kindergarten through first grade, and then you came here to second grade. Um, and then if, were you, uh, have you only lived in Texas, or? Yes, I have only lived in Texas. So when you got to Grandview Hills, one of the first things you kind of noticed, you touched on, is like the, the global focus, and that's of the, the IB PYP program that we have here at Grandview Hills. So what? how would you explain IB to somebody who has no idea what IB is? IB is worldwide education IB could be worldwide just about anything global and it's just about just about everything and you kind of have we have our IB profile traits or learner profiles which like thinker risk taker and perspective all those stuff reflective open-minded and we have a lot of people that are kind and that are, they have, they're just risk takers, and they are Eagle Ambassadors, and just about everybody in our school. Um, We're also doing a food truck project, which um, it involves math. So 
math with the food truck project. We're creating our own little food truck. I'm doing nachos. So since I, um, when we started, I was in Quest um, for a project. Um, so we have to add up what we have. We have a budget, so we can't go over our budget. And we get to pick these different places for ours to stay at. I chose mine to stay at UT because in between classes, people probably want to eat. And with my food truck, it's like, you could say church friendly or Catholic friendly, Christian friendly, because usually for my church, um, it ends around 12 o'clock. So for people to be able to get home, they're probably hungry. So my food truck opens at 1230 on the weekends. So it gives me time to get my food truck ready, and it gives me time to be able to give the other customers time. So what else are you doing for the food truck? You said there's a math component to it, too. Yeah, we have to add together our ingredients, and we have to have enough for a while, like a year or so. And it has to be enough, like, food to make our final product with the meal. What do you like about doing projects versus kind of what I think still a lot of times people consider school to be a lot of like sitting in rows and having someone talk at you? Do you like working on projects? Do you prefer kind of just traditional kind of what people, a lot of people would view as traditional learning? Mm -hmm. I prefer to do projects than like a worksheet because with the projects, I have more than like a day or a week to do it. So sometimes I can go ahead from what we're doing and I could always have, I could always be doing other work while I'm doing that project too. Do you think that there's still a place for like traditional learning in a classroom where someone's kind of like giving you a review of a textbook and you're taking notes and then you're being quizzed and maybe doing worksheets along the way? Do you think there's still, Mm -hmm. do you think there's still a place for that kind of learning? Mm Mm-hmm. What do you think? What do you think is the time when you learn that way, and when is the time you do projects? Projects is usually after I get my individual papers done. So, since I know that I'll always have time for my projects during flex, um, it always gives me time because I have about fifty minutes to do my project during flex, so I don't have to worry about that. The only thing that I have to worry about is my mindfulness. So, you're talking about. So you feel like, let me try to restate what I feel like you're telling me, because mm-hmm. this is important, because a lot about what we do on this podcast is we like to talk about how people learn and like how school looks and how what we can do to make school, based on what students like about school, how we mm-hmm. can make it more um, student-focused in terms of how we you know provide learning or facilitate learning for y'all. Okay. So to me, what you're describing is, you do like to have some of those traditional learning opportunities to kind of like get familiar with with different stuff that you like to learn or need to learn. Mm-hmm. And then you like to have those opportunities to do a project that kind of reinforces and kind of restates the things that you've already learned in that traditional way. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense to you? Is that kind of a way that you, you do learn now in school and what yeah. you, you think works and you kind of like? That's exactly how I was trying to word it. It's just, yeah. I'm glad I nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) What does research look like? Like, how would you describe what research is, and how did you start with that? Finding the topic that we wanted to use and um, just, like, how we have restricted websites. Um, Our class isn't allowed to use Wikipedia because our teacher in language arts believes that it it has untrue information so we're not allowed to use wikipedia so it was kind of hard for us to find websites that we could use that were kid friendly and that was appropriate for us to use with actual information that we agreed was true okay so that's interesting so you had to actually read and validate whether or not you think something's true does your teacher let you use wikipedia as a place to find other articles because wikipedia does have 
links to other articles and resources. Well, no, she doesn't really like us to use it, so we don't go on it as much, but there are a lot of different websites, but it is kind of hard because usually in the past years we were able to use Wikipedia, and we thought it gave us true information. Okay. So it's just an obstacle, you could say, that we have to dodge so we can get to the other options. So, okay. So, Wikipedia was this place that you guys felt as students was a good place for information, and then your English teacher kind of challenged you on that idea. Mm -hmm. How did it make you feel um, to kind of be challenged like that and overcome it? And um, did, did you get any explanation as to why Wikipedia might not be a great place for information? We didn't really get an explanation. She just told us that it wouldn't be good for us as much as other <laughs> websites. So I just found um, other websites that could really help me, and I stuck with those websites because I've never really had problems with them, and it's just been great for me. So where do you go for research? Um, I usually go on Google to see my top um my top searches so I could figure out what I wanted to use and then after that I just um <laughs> after that I just like to see what looks like it gives the best information because it shows a little bit of what it's going to say under the heading the title of the passage so I know what to search up so what do you look for in determining whether or not you think something is a good source for information? Because it's this big problem, right? The mm -hmm. internet's amazing because you have places it's like great. Wikipedia mm -hmm. and all of these different websites. But it's a, so you have all this information in here. But then you have this other element of you have all this information, but you have to know like who's giving you the information. Mm -hmm. So like in Wrinkle in Time, when they go to the um, when they go to that planet, I don't remember the name of the planet, when they go to the planet and there's that guy who comes and greets them, mm -hmm. and he's kind of dishonest, right? Yeah, very. And you got to have to know, because I don't think you know right away that he's being dishonest, and <laughs> doesn't he convince the little boy that he is doing what's right, I think? <laughs> so you have to evaluate him as a character as to what he's saying to be able to determine whether he's honest. You kind of have to do that on the internet, too, right? You have to <laughs> figure out, so what do you think you have to look for on the internet and just in general on resources when you read things to verify if they're true or not. Usually how we verify whether it's true or not is we go, since we have three people in our group, we go on three different websites and um, we read all of it. And then once we're done, we talk to each other on what happened in the passage. And if we all get the same answer, then that's what we type about. Okay, so part of how you figure out whether or not something's true is you get multiple different sources. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you do to look at the different sources? Not usually, no. You don't, like, look and see if they came from, like, academic, like, an academic institution? Like, who is the source, right? Like, you could look at it and say, like, oh, well, this is from a university, so therefore mm -hmm. it's probably more likely to be credible than if it was just from some website where you can't tell the sources or... This is from the, the government, mm -hmm. so then it's an official group of scientists. So, like, it's from, um, did you do any, did you find anything from NOAA, the National Oceanic Association website? It's like, it's not a private business, it's a, it's a governmental entity, so maybe that's a little more credible than if you had something from, like, a private business that you don't know what their interest is or what they're doing. Yeah. So, we've never, I've never used that, but if it's not restricted, I'll probably go back and use it. I would hope that no is not restricted. Do you encounter in your research different websites that are restricted? Yes, and half the time we don't understand why because we see the little caption under it and we think that it's okay and it'll actually give us good research. So it's really hard and frustrating sometimes because it just doesn't work. And then you don't really feel like you get a good answer why. Yeah. Is there a good way for you to be able to request it to not be blocked? No, because if we can't see what's being said on it, I don't really think that I should be able to say something about it if there's no, if I don't know the reason of it being blocked. 
Okay. But isn't there a way that you can click a button and like put in a request to like, hey, maybe this shouldn't be blocked? Or is that not easy to do? No. Well, I'm sorry about that. That's got to be frustrating doing research and thinking that you're going to someplace cool. Yeah. So it's noaa.gov okay. is the website I'm telling you about. Okay. So you're putting this project together. You're talking about the ocean and poaching. What were the other topics and things in your research? Um, whether Megalodon was so real or not. Okay. Um, mermaids, if they had ever existed. And we're still searching that up because it's really hard to find true answers on that topic. We have, I have no clue why. So... That's interesting that you were doing mermaids and megalodon, and we're talking about fact finding because there's this whole um, it was Discovery Channel, which is typically kind of like this true factual um, web. I mean, now there used to just be a TV ch- a TV channel. And now everybody's got all of these different platforms, right? Yeah, so like they have websites National and everything. National Geographic. And so, like, Discovery, you're like, okay, this is the place where I get real information. And then they did these entire fictional shows that looked true mm-hmm. about mermaids and megalodon. Yes. And, like, caused super confusing because it's like, this is Discovery Channel. This is where I go to get information about, like, the environment and things that are actually happening in animals mm-hmm. in the world around me. And now they're doing, like, this entertainment. So, yes. like, finding that mix between entertainment and what's real yeah. really hard and how the lines get blurred is that kind of what you saw too in that research between mermaids and megalodon mm-hmm. um so i helped search up for that slide and it was pretty hard because we couldn't get the answers between saying megalodon there was like a cloud it wasn't the surface of the ocean it was like a cloud a thick layer of cloud So they would be under that layer of cloud. Yet the megalodon is really big, and the since the cloud is so thick, there can't be that much space under the cloud. So how would there be able to fit a whole megalodon more, like more than one? So it's not really. I think it's possible, but I don't think it's possible. So it's really hard to decide. What book are you reading right now? Right now I'm reading A Wrinkle in Time. Okay, so A Wrinkle in Time is kind of sci-fi, fantasy. Mm-hmm. Is this your first time reading it? No, it's like my third time reading it. Your I really third like time the book. reading it. Mm-hmm. Why do you think, what do you like about the, can you, for the people who haven't read Wrinkle in Time, can you tell us a little bit about the story? I really like how there involves time traveling because I like mysteries and stuff. So the obstacles that they have to go through just really interests me. I'm trying to remember because I've read Wrinkle in Time mm-hmm. and there's the family and they go off to kind of, it's time travel, but it's really they go to a different planet, right? Yeah. And that's how they find their dad. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, there's those those three like god-like <laughs> beings. I don't remember what yeah. they're called though. I I the misses. The misses, right? Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah, it's a it's an interesting book, and then there's the the little boy and the sister. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why do you think reading is important? Reading is important because it builds up your stamina. Um, reading. That's an interesting take. It builds up your stamina. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you really get to relax. Um, it just calms me down most of the time. So that's how why I use reading most of the time. And I just really like to read. It gives me the opportunity to just feel like I have a safe space. Before we go to mindfulness, I want to talk about Wrinkle in Time a little bit more. Okay. Because I find it super interesting that you're reading this book, and I've read this book, so I think it's something we could talk about. I love talking about books. I'm... Uh, your English teacher would hate this, but I pulled up Wikipedia as a refresher as to what happened. Because I understand her point. Because her point is that I think, not knowing your teacher, I'm obviously get a mega guess wikipedia is this place where anybody can go and edit it right yes so wikipedia i could literally go into wikipedia and edit this wrinkle in time article that's on wikipedia Mm -hmm. what i think is great about wikipedia is that if you know if you know what you're getting into that this is just a place where anybody can write Mm -hmm. and you have this they have to cite their sources that you can still go find things and evaluate whether you think it's credible or not. So it's yeah. not, I don't think that Wikipedia should ever be something that you cite on a research. Like you should never say like, 
Wikipedia should never be the sole source of this research project on mermaids. Mm -hmm. But if you go to a, a Wikipedia page about mermaids and you look at all of the different links that are on that Wikipedia page, mm -hmm. and maybe there is a resource that gives you that's from a credible place that you find as a result, kind of just like going to Google. So that's my, <laughs> not to argue with your teacher, but that'd be my argument of the value of Wikipedia is not that Wikipedia is a place where you can find primary sources that is a primary source, but mm -hmm. it is a place where you can find primary sources. Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm going to do Wikipedia. I'm going to do. A, I'm gonna just read here the general overview. Maybe it'll spark some conversation about Wrinkle in Time for us. Okay. So Wrinkle in Time is a young adult novel written by American author Madeleine Lingle. First published in 1962, the book won the Newbery Medal and the Sequoia, the Sequoia Book Award, the Lewis Carroll Shelf Award, and was a runner-up for the Hans Christian Andersen Award. The main characters, Meg Murray, Charles Wallace Murray, and Calvin O'Keefe, embark on a journey through space and time, from universe to universe, as they endeavor to save the Murray's father and the world. The novel offers a glimpse into the war between light and darkness and goodness and evil, as the young characters mature in adolescence on their journey. The novel wrestles with questions of spirituality and purpose, as the characters are often thrown into conflicts of love, divinity, and goodness. It is the first book in Alingle's Time Quintet, which follows the Murray Bees and Calvin O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. So there are a series of books that go along with The Wrinkle in Time. Mm -hmm. And I'm remembering that a lot. I haven't read any of the other books. There's two movies that were made. There was a 20, 2003 television film. And then there was the 2018 theatrical release that went into widescreen TV. I have never seen the 2003, but I've seen the 2018. And I really liked the movie because it tied along with the book very well. It's just that the book had a different way of explaining. So I could have my own picture in my head, but the movie had its picture. So I just had a different idea from what it had said. So you liked it not necessarily because it was how you envisioned the characters and the scenes in it, but you liked it just because you liked this story and it was a different perspective and it kind of allowed you to rethink about your own perspective. Mm-hmm. Are you all right? Was that your yeah. was that your hand? My elbow. Your elbow cracks. My my ankle still crack. I thought when I got older it wasn't gonna happen anymore, but I still crack all the time. See, that was my mm. ankle. All right, so I'm remembering the book now a little bit better. So you, uh, the book opens with Meg and and her brother Charles Wallace Charles Murray. Wallace. Charles Wallace and Charles Wallace is adopted. Yeah, right. He's adopted mm -hmm. and he's super smart. Right, that's his thing. Extremely smart. And he's like a, he's really young, but he acts like, he's like a kindergartner, right? Yeah. But he speaks like he's, he's like, like a. eight, nine, but he talks like he's 35. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely educational. And Meg is just kind of like, just feels out of place, right? Like, she's not as smart as Charles Wallace, but she's not stupid. Yeah. Like, she's definitely. smart in her own right, but she still feels like an, out, like an outsider, an outcast yeah. kind of, right? Was there any part of those two characters that you really related to? Do you have a little brother? No, I have an older brother, uh -huh. and I guess you could say that... You're the super smart one, and he's the outcast, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I just, I remember, and then, but she's also Meg, because she meets Calvin, right? And she, mm -hmm. How does she feel about Calvin? I think they just really have a connection because they're usually interested in the same things and then they can really agree on things. So she thinks that he's something, somebody that she can bond with and share her comforts with. Right, and she's, she kind of finds like comfort in that friendship, right? Mm -hmm. It's because she doesn't feel attached and she feels like it opens up with her. The books kind of opens with her in school. Yes. And she could tell she just doesn't feel like she's a part of yeah. anything. Especially since in the movie she got bully, bullied by a group of girls. And one day she just took all her anger out on the girls, which I wouldn't do that. And if you were making fun of my brother or anybody, i just attempt to stand up for them. But I wouldn't go as far as hitting them or punch or being rude in any type of way. i just say that's untrue. I don't appreciate how you said that. Please don't do that again. So do you feel like stories and books give you the opportunity to see, especially when they're about kids, 
give you the opportunity to think about <coughs> how they act and relate it to how you would act or what how you would make decisions. Mm-hmm. And do you think that's a, an important part of reading and why? Yeah. Um, if I can connect to the book, I can really understand what the character is going through and why they're going through that. Okay, I want to end by talking about mindfulness because that's something that's really big here at Grandview Hills. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is focusing on staying in the present moment. We have a great mindfulness teacher, Miss Lacey, and she told us or taught us just about everything she knew. So we really appreciate that. I appreciate that because mindfulness is staying in the present moment. You don't have to worry about what's happened or what will happen. You just focus on your breaths, not focusing on like, if your breath stinks, if it just smells great that day, just focusing on the present moment. So what do you do when you guys learn about mindfulness? I like to take notes and listen on what she's saying. So since I have a class almost every day, I can go and teach that class so they can attempt to teach somebody else. And the chain just keeps going. Because mindfulness is a great thing. My, I use mindfulness in my every day, even on the weekend when I don't have school. So what do you do, though? Like, what what do you, I mean, you just sit and breathe? Or are there specific? No, we have the chime, which you ding, like you hit it, and it makes this ding sound. So there's, like, different activities or strategies or something. Okay, and so one of them is called, you're just explaining it, one of the strategies is called the ding? The chime. The chime. <laughs> and it makes this ding sound. And when you can't hear it anymore, you just raise your hand and it really calms you down. And we have a breathing ball that um, when you pull the both sides, there's like these little circle things that you pull and it just expands. And then you start to go in and it closes it. And it just... So the chime, the breathing ball, what other things do you do? Uh, I created a game to where, like, you clap out of nowhere. Uh, I give you a number from 1 to 10, and you clap out of nowhere, and then you just... So what does that mean, to clap out of nowhere? So you clap... Yeah. So (laughs) after I say go, you just get to choose when you clap. And if you don't clap before I say stop, then um, you just don't get to clap. So So it's not randomly scaring people by clapping when they don't think you're going to clap. Yeah. That's not what it is. Not at all. So what I just did is not very mindful. No. I'm sorry for that. (laughs) And then after a little while, I tell them to start, and they start to clap from the number that I say. So like seven, they'll clap seven times. Okay, so lead me through this exercise if you can. All right. So um, I'll say clap three times. Now clap four times. Clap eight times. Oh, so I'm listening to the instruction and you're not following it. So it's supposed to be about me focusing on the clap, my own clapping? No. Nope. So we're supposed to, cl- at one point of the time, you're just supposed to try and stay on beat with the other person. Oh, I'm supposed to stay with you. Yeah, I didn't say that though, so it's perfectly uh, fine. So. Okay, let's do it again. Clap four times. And after you're clapping at um, a slow pace, you get the moments of silence to just breathe and stay calm. So your breaths are going to be slow while you inhale and exhale slowly also. So if you clap four times, one, two... Four. So that's just about all. Why do you think mindfulness is something that kids should learn about? You don't have to take your anger out on somebody else or on yourself. It's important to know that you have a way to calm down other than starting to get frustrated and be mad and you just really get to calm down and it's a time where you get your quietness and even if it's loud 
focus on your breaths and it'll turn quiet out of nowhere if you can really stay in that present moment and you're not worrying about anything that's happening so like you're not yelling at whoever's making noise stop that's not very mindful at all that's very cool so where are you off next year Four points. Four points? Mm-hmm. Are you nervous about middle school? Excited about middle school? No, I'm not nervous. I'm... I feel okay about it. I don't really think that I'm nervous, nor am I excited. I'm... I guess you could say I'm afraid to change what's happening here in Grandview and go to a different school knowing that it won't be the same. So I'll feel really odd about that. Have you got a chance to pick your classes yet, or? Yeah, I haven't. I don't, like, pick which period I'm going to be in or which class I'll have then. Um, I just choose what I really want to do. Like, band, you can only have band if you choose the first year, and then the next year you can have choir and band in seventh grade. So I think that going to Four Points will just really give me the opportunity to explore what's happening around me, not just what's happening in, like, Grandview or just happening in Four Points. I'll be able to explore everything. Well, it seems like you're kind of already doing that here. So it's just yeah. Like... It won't be hard at all, so I'll be pretty fun. Cool. Well, thank you for talking to me. No this problem. has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to the Student Voice Podcast. That was Peyton Johnson. If you can, give her a round of applause for wherever you're listening because she was amazing, spectacular, wonderful, every adjective you can think of. We're excited to bring you Student Voice as part of the Leander ISD Podcast Network. You may have noticed if you're a subscriber that we have added more audio opportunities for you to enjoy. Please subscribe, rate, and review us. Listen to school board meetings after the fact. We also have our Let's Talk, Learn, and Have Fun with Bruce and Friends. That's our live Facebook show that we produce on Fridays. We're going to do episode three this Wednesday. We're actually trying to bring Peyton in on that show as well. So you might hear Peyton again later this week. If you're a subscriber, rate and review us. Let us know what you think. You can visit us at news.leanderisd.org for all of the information and updates, the things that you need to know and learn the stories of Leander ISD. Again, I'm Corey Ryan. We have more podcast episodes and learning to do that we can publish here through the next couple weeks. So please, 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 please download us again, listen, and help share and capture and continue the story of Leander ISD. Have a great rest of your day.